Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today I'm going to show you how to convert your standard bike into an electric bike using a switch e-bike conversion kit. Now I apologize that it's been a while since I posted a video and if you'd like to hear why just hang out to the end of this video and I'll give you guys some updates. But for now, let's get started building this e-bike. Now I first found out about this switch kit about a month and a half ago at the Eurobike trade show. The idea is that it's this simple bolt-on kit that swaps out the front wheel for a hub motor and then has everything else in this pouch that goes onto the handlebars. And it seems like a really nice kit and so uh, after learning about it and giving the kit a test ride there at the show, I wanted to grab one of these and try it out here on my channel and see how easy it is to install. So let's get this thing open. All right, so we've got the main part of the kit, which is the hub motor wheel here, and then we've got a few more boxes with the rest of the kit. And the fact that these boxes are already untaped and this pink tape on the outside makes me think that Customs went through this to check out what the heck I was having shipped to me. All right, so this is the other main part of the kit. This is the actual battery controller and brains of the thing. And this is what's gonna get mounted up here on the handlebars of the bike. So this is pretty cool. And the idea is that you just pop this thing off whenever you're not using the bike. Like if you go to the store, you just park your bike outside and you just take this thing off with a quick release. And then you can almost fit it in your pocket. It's, it's a little big for pocket size, but you could definitely stick this in your backpack or your purse or something like that. It's pretty cool for how small it is. Okay, next we've got the quick release mount here. Uh, we've got a um, pedal sensor for a uh, cadence sensor when you're pedaling. We've got the throttle, which is an optional add-on if you want to use a throttle. This looks like a motor wire extension if you've got a, a weird setup on your bike, maybe like a recumbent or something. And a charger. Now in the next box we have my other ride is a Tesla. <laughs> Nice. I don't actually own a Tesla or any car. Not sure what this is even. Oh, I think maybe this is like a rain cover for the battery if you're riding out in the rain. That's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, and apparently I got three more of those. And the instructions. The quick start guide. And one more. My other ride is a Tesla rain cover. All right, so let's get to installing this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the battery to charge here so that it's nice and charged when I'm done with my install. And I can go ahead and get started playing with this thing. All right, so we are charging. So it seems the first step is gonna to be to swap out this motor wheel for the original bicycle wheel. So I'm gonna get my bike flipped over and I'm gonna start that process. All right, now the next step here would normally be to take this disc off and put it on the motor wheel. The problem is that I actually had to go get a separate disc because this one is held on with this weird uh, rivet system that I'm not used to. Normally these are just held on with bolts. So I got another disc, I'm gonna put the other disc on this new wheel. All right, now I've gotta swap the tire over onto this new wheel. To do that, I'll start by letting the air out of this tire. All right, now I can use tire levers to get down under there and pop this tire off. If you don't have actual tire levers, you can use like the back of a spoon or something. It's not great and you want to avoid using anything sharp that's going to pinch the tube and pop it, but there are ways to get around it. These things cost me like five bucks though. They're just cheap plastic tire levers, so I recommend getting a set if you plan on doing this. From here, I'll pull the valve stem out from the rim and then I can get the whole tire off, which is Sometimes easier said than done. There we go. All right, from here I'm going to check the direction of the tire tread, and then I'm going to seat the first bead of the tire into the center part of the rim, and then I'm going to follow that with the valve stem, sliding the valve stem through the hole in the rim. And to keep this from moving around on you, sometimes it can help to just put the cap back on the valve stem, and then you're going to go around and you're going to seat the bead, and in the beginning it's going to be pretty easy, and then once you get back around it's going to become progressively more difficult as you have to start stretching the tire if you can get it over with your fingers that's uh, the best situation because you want to avoid doing anything that's going to pop the tube inside if it's too tight and you can't get it with your fingers 
Then you can start taking the tire levers and lifting the uh, bead over the edge of the rim. Hopefully I can get this just with finger strength alone. Yeah, there we go. All right. So from here, now I just need to pump the tire back up and I will have a wheel ready to put back in the bike. Now for the wheel, you want to make sure that you're aligning both the disc brake and the axles at the same time. And you want to have the wire from the axle coming out in the up direction when the bike's upside down. So that this is exiting down when the bike is right side up. So here we have backed off the nuts here so I've got enough room. I've got my torque washers spaced out so that the torque washer can slip down into the axle slot here. And I'm going to align the two axles and the disc brake at the same time, which sometimes is easier said than done, but see how this goes. There we go. So that was pretty painless. And now I can go and tighten those up. All right, so now I've got my motor in here, but the problem is I've got some significant brake rub here. So I'm gonna show you how to fix this if you have hydraulic brakes. I'm gonna open up the two bolts that hold the caliper onto the fork. All right, so this is interesting. I've, I've got these bolts open all the way and the caliper is now out as far as it'll go and I'm still rubbing. So what that means is I actually need to space out the fork a little bit further. And that means I need a washer on the inside. Now the switch kit didn't come with any hub motor washers besides the main torque washers, but I happen to have one from another hub motor, so I'm going to toss this on. Uh, it could just be because of the specific fork I'm using, but I am a little surprised I ran into that problem and that there weren't any uh, washers in the kit. So that might be something that uh, they'll want to add in the future. All right, now I've finally got it. Um, there were two problems here. So first of all, we were rubbing on the caliper and I had to put that extra washer in on the inside of the shoulder here. But there's a second problem and I'm going to bring you around here for it. We were also rubbing over, bring in here, right here. It's really hard to see. But right there we are rubbing between the suspension fork and the uh, edge of the shell on this hub motor. So there I put a second washer, that's a C washer. Alright, so now the wheel spins. Last thing to do is just um, affix the caliper in the right spot. So the way you do that is we're going to tighten back up these caliper bolts and we're going to do that while we're holding the brake lever down so that it is held in the middle position. Now the next step is going to be to install the pedal assist sensor here. It's going to go on the square taper bottom bracket. Uh, and the switch kit includes a two-piece sensor. So this is nice because you don't need to pull the crank off here to put it on. It's just two halves and you click it in place. The slight issue is that it requires about five millimeters of space here. And not all bottom brackets give you that much space. If you come look at mine, I've got about, maybe we'll call that, two millimeters, something like that. So it's a little bit thick to allow mine in. So if we look at the troubleshooting section here, one of the solutions for this problem they say is that you can simply trim the center section of the disc here. And so I'm gonna try that and see if I can get that to fit over my crank. All right, so I went nice and slow and I trimmed off just a little bit at a time until I think I got this where it needs to be. So now it is just a little bit tight if I put this on, but I think I prefer it a little tight to a little loose. So I'm gonna try and stick with that. It seems to work pretty well, and then I'm gonna put this locking ring on it here. There we go. All right, so the locking ring is on it. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, so the next step, I believe, is put the sensor on here. The problem is that the tubes here are pretty thick, and I just don't have enough room to mount it on the tube the way that most people mount these. But I think I have enough room to sort of jam it in here in the down tube. So I'm going to try that. All right, so I've managed to get this sensor in here now by lowering, or actually, I guess, raising, because the bike is upside down, the mount for the derailleur. So I'm going to have to adjust the length of this cable now because I've messed with the derailleur height. I only moved it a couple millimeters, so I don't think it'll be a huge issue, but it gives me just enough to be able to get the sensor in here so I can get it aligned fairly radially with the uh, magnet ring here. So now, when I turn the pedals, 
it works. And that blinking means that it's reading each of these magnets. All right, now we can flip the bike over and put the battery on the handlebars. All right, from here they say to mount this upwards at a 45 degree angle while you're putting it on. All right, so I'll put that strap through when I bolt this thing on. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this other side here. So the point of that strap there is to keep this from sagging down too much when you've got the battery mounted on it. All right, so now we can start connecting things. So I'm gonna connect the pedal assist. I need to zip tie this on here. So I believe this is the motor wire here. And I'm just gonna add some zip ties to make this look a little nicer. All right, throttle. Man, I was hoping they'd include the twist, but I got the thumb throttle, that's okay though. For the throttle, we've gotta remove the grip here, which is always annoying. A really good way to do this, by the way, is if you have an air gun, put the tip under here and just blow air in, or if there's a hole in the end, just put the air gun in the uh, end and blow. But if you don't, then you just gotta muscle it off. Sometimes you can lift it up here and spray some WD-40 under, but the good old pull and twist method seems to work also. There we go. First we'll slide the throttle on, if we can get that wire out of the way. Then we'll slide on this little safety thing here. This keeps the grip from actually touching the throttle and causing the throttle to stick in the wide open position, which would be obviously quite bad. And then the grip's gonna go back on. But I'm gonna trim it first. Let's see how much we have to trim off. About that much. All right, so now I'm gonna trim this guy. Should probably use a pair of scissors, but a knife will also work in a pinch. Just don't cut yourself. All right. Now we can put our grip back on. And we can tighten our throttle. All right, so now we've got a throttle. All right, so now we just need to connect our throttle, which is also a three pin. I wonder if that matters, which three pin that is. Didn't say it did. I think that's it. My kit did not include the uh, hydraulic brake lever cutoffs. I might want those at some point. It's a nice safety feature, so I might email them and see if I can get some of those added to my kit. But now I think we're ready to put the power pack on. So I assume this just drops on. I have not actually done this before. Get all my cables out of the way. Ooh, that was a satisfying click. All right, so what happens if I turn this on? All right, so now the throttle works and the pedal assist works. Perfect. Now it is time to go outside and test this thing out. So in hindsight, I probably chose the worst bike possible as a donor bike in this project because it had so many unusual things that gave me problems or required a bit of creativity to solve, but that's all behind me now and it's time to have some fun on this kit. So the motor definitely pulls nicely, but I do notice a bit of lag here. It's, it's not huge, but there's a tiny bit of lag. When you give it throttle or you start to pedal, it feels like the controller is slowly ramping up the power over about one or two seconds or so, instead of just like dumping that power based on how hard you're pressing the throttle. The upside of that is that it's designed to make your motor last longer in terms of less stress on the gears, and it's also probably going to give you better range because you're not wasting so much energy as heat when you just dump a bunch of current into a slow spinning motor on startup. The downside though is that you do get somewhat reduced acceleration. But this is a 250 slash 350 watt kit, so I wasn't really expecting to pull away like I'm on a motorcycle here. The motor is not very loud, though you can definitely still hear it whirring there. But the bike generally feels good, you know, it feels solid, the handlebars don't really feel like there's anything heavy up there, and to be fair it's only a kilo and a half that's added to the bars, so it's not really that heavy. And it's also pretty close to the axis of revolution here in the headset, so when you turn you don't really feel like you've got this big moment there, and you don't feel like the bars are resisting you, or that you've got a bunch of weight there. 
if you've ever had a bicycle basket, it kind of feels almost like an empty basket. Now, if you have a bunch of stuff in a basket that's really far away from the handlebars, then you'll feel it when you start to turn. Or if you've got loose things up there that are bouncing around. But because this is all really rigid and close to the bars, you don't really feel it here. I honestly think it just kind of feels like a regular bike. In terms of speed, the kit is supposed to hit 20 miles an hour or 32 kilometers per hour, which it does on the flat, but what I'm really interested in here is how much does it slow down when you're going up a hill. So I'm going to pull out my phone here and try to measure that. Now I don't recommend holding your phone while riding folks, don't mimic me please. I'm not on a road here, I'm on a bike lane that's currently empty. But still, uh, just use a phone holder if you're going to do this, this is just for a quick test here. Uh, I'm also going downhill though, so I need to turn around here so I'm going back uphill. Alright, now I'm going uphill, and this is not a big hill, it's probably like maybe 5 or 6 percent, uh, but we don't have a lot of big hills here in Tel Aviv. So let's see what I can top out at here on even just like a moderate hill. And this is with no pedaling, this is throttle only going up a hill. I'm at 18, 19 miles an hour, let's see, back at 18, so it looks like we're, we're peaking somewhere around 18 or 19 miles an hour up a slight hill. So I think that's pretty good, you know, this isn't high power of course. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the switch kit. Now, the battery's a little bit small, you know, it's 5 amp hours, but the cool thing is it just packs down into this tiny little package, and I think it's a really neat, innovative solution. If you do need more battery, you could potentially get another one of these battery packs, or you could maybe build a booster battery and plug it into the charge port on the back here. That might be something that I do in a future video and uh, show how to do that. Um, but yeah, generally I think this is pretty cool and I like it. Um, just a reminder, this is not a paid review or anything. Um, as you guys know, I don't do those and I don't plan to. I just really thought the Switch Kit was cool and innovative, and I'd never seen anything like it, so I wanted to give it a try. Alright, so now I think there's only two things left to do. Uh, one is to tell you guys where the heck I've been for the last few months, and the other is to announce the uh, giveaway winner from my last video. So I'll do the uh, second one first. And the winning commenter for my last video is... Jack Menino. So congratulations, Jack. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like. Send me an email and let me know where to send it. And to answer your question, Jack, yeah, you can definitely put those two batteries in parallel. You just want to make sure that their charge level is approximately the same. All right, now to tell you guys where the heck I've been for the last few months and to give you some life updates. So as many of you know, a little over a year ago, my wife and I moved to Cambridge, Massachusetts, where she was working on her master's degree. It was a one-year program and she's finished it. So now we've moved back to Tel Aviv, where we are now. I'm in my new apartment. It's kind of weird because I'm still figuring out where all my stuff goes in the apartment, even though we've been here a few months and I'm getting used to a new workspace. But that's where we are. The move was a little more complicated logistically than I thought it would be, and it definitely sort of delayed me in producing more videos. But that wasn't all, because in addition to the move, I had a ton of travel for Electrek. Now, as many of you know, I work for Electrek, an online news organization that reports on electric vehicles and environmental issues. And I cover all of the electric bike, electric motorcycle, all of the um, personal electric mobility stuff. I also manage Electrek's YouTube channel. So I've been doing a lot of traveling. I was in uh, Sardinia, Italy, reviewing the new Renault Zoe electric car, uh, which I don't normally do electric car things, but this was a really fun uh, first experience for me, and uh, so that was a cool one. Uh, and then afterwards I was in Friedrichshafen, Germany at Eurobike. It's my first time going to Eurobike, and that was pretty awesome. Uh, and now I'm preparing to go to Milan for the uh, EICMA 2019 Milan Motorcycle Show. So there's been a lot of moving around, and uh, there's been a lot of work on Electric's YouTube channel. Since I joined Electric, uh, the channel's grown from 5,000 subscribers to, I think we're coming up on 50,000 soon. So there's been a lot of growth there, but it's not stopping me from working on my own channel, and I'm definitely going to make sure that I uh, try to continue my one video-ish per week uh, here on my ebikeschool.com YouTube channel. But those weren't the only things that have been taking a lot of my time and preventing me from making videos. About a month ago, I came down with a pretty decent case of pneumonia. Now, I'm generally a, a pretty healthy guy. You know, I try to run like three to five miles a day. I eat healthy. And normally it takes a lot to knock me down, but pneumonia knocked me on my butt. So I haven't really done anything active for about the last month. 
Uh, in fact, riding the e-bike with the switch kit for this video is the first time I've been on a bike in about a month. And so I'm on the way to recovery now. Uh, I'm doing pretty well. Like I'm, I'm healthy now. I, I had lost like 10 or 15% of my body weight, which was pretty dramatic, but I'm putting it back and I'm starting to sort of get my stamina and my strength back. So that definitely sort of added to the delay and being able to produce content for my channel. But now that I'm uh, on the road to recovery, so to speak, uh, I'm excited to get back into creating videos. Again, I'm gonna try to do this every week. You know, in the past, sometimes I had more than one video per week. Sometimes it took me three weeks to get a video up, but I'm gonna try to aim for that one a week. And I've got a lot of interesting videos to show you guys. I even still have a few videos that I filmed back in Cambridge a few months ago, and I need to do the editing to get them up there. I have updates on my um, Honda Cub electric motorcycle conversion. I've got some battery building videos that I need to edit and get up. So I've got good stuff coming. And I'm excited to share it with you guys. So thank you for hanging in there with me. I'm sure this video is way longer than I intended it to be, so I'm gonna cut it off now. I will see you guys next time.